Well, so what we have here is an HP 3437A uh, system voltmeter. I got this meter not too long ago, about, about uh, two weeks ago, and uh, I bought it just out of curiosity. I've seen these things in the uh, uh, you know the catalogs and and uh, read the uh, the specs on it and so forth. And uh, it seems to be a pretty capable meter. You can uh, make up to over 5,000 readings per second. And you can uh, introduce delays all the way down to, uh, looks like, uh, see, we got milli, micro, all the way down to 100 nanoseconds. So, huh, this is uh, a meter that, uh, that I don't think I would ever really use normally. But you can, you can couple this with, a, uh, with an HP 180 uh, oscilloscope and uh, make measurements, voltage measurements, uh, at particular areas on the waveform just by using the, uh, the delay function and, you, and uh, the number of readings function. But uh, all I can do with it is I can change ranges. You know, I got 1.1, 1, 1 volt, 10 volt. I can uh, change the trigger. I can change, uh, let's see, the delay, the number of readings, etc. Uh, but the voltmeter is always in all nines. Always showing all nines in overvolt. And I started reading through the manual, and I came across uh, some sections in the service manual that uh, indicate this specific issue right here. There's uh, some diagnostic LEDs inside, and uh, there's, there's two of them that are labeled 0 and 1. And the manual says that if any of those two LEDs are on, and you have this here, the display showing all nines, uh, it's the, the likely culprit is going to be a uh, uh, U19, which is a, uh, an opto-isolator. So we're going to tear the thing apart and uh, kind of dive into it. I got my uh, opto-isolators here the other day, so I, I bought 10 of them, so I have some extras on hand. And so we're going to open this thing up and uh, see if we can uh, fix it and get it working like it should. One thing I wanted to uh, add before I start tearing into this, uh, it's always a good idea to get yourself a posi drive screwdriver set. I got this gear wrench set off Amazon. It uh, was like 30 some odd bucks. And so far, it's been a pretty good set of screwdrivers. Uh, you can use regular Phillips screwdrivers to take these things apart, but it's you got to be careful because you can very easily strip the screws. So that's one thing I wanted to add. So we're going to use these two screwdrivers, and uh, we're going to have at it. All right. So now we have to take the both the top and the bottoms off and the side rails off each side. And here is the analog board, which our suspected trouble is. And then the logic board is on this side here. Nicely constructed, nice HP construction quality, so let's uh, keep digging. Okay, to get the logic board loose, we have to take that screw loose, a screw here, and a screw here, and now this board just folds right open. Everything's easy to get to, and HBIB settings are here, and uh, everything's just nice. Okay, now here is the old analog board, so to get this out, we need to take that screw out. We need to take these, this screw, this screw, and that screw out. And then on the sides, there are three screws here, here, and here on both sides that need to come out. And then this whole thing should just fold down. Okay, with the analog board, I got three screws I had to take out here, here, and here. Now this board just folds right down. 
just like the one on the other side. So it uh, gives you a real convenient way to uh, to do your troubleshooting. So, without further ado, here I will do a couple small tests and uh, we'll see what there is to see. Well, after a little bit of testing here, I tested some voltage rails, and uh, here there's supposed to be minus 25 volts. Well, there's only minus 6. Here there's supposed to be minus 20, and there's about a minus 7. It's supposed to be a minus 2 here, and there's a minus 2, or there's a plus 2, which is supposed to be a 2. Uh, the 9 volt reference here is fine. Uh, the 14 volt reference on the other end, it's only 7 volts. Um, this 5.9 volter here is fine. So, I've tested all these diodes and they all seem to test okay. Uh, and here is where a voltage doubler is. And these two diodes here generate the negative 20 some odd volts or 25 volts this thing needs. And I've tested all these caps, tested them in circuit. And, which isn't the you know the best way to do it, but you know it it worked. Uh, this one here tested to uh, pretty much 220. This one tested 40, which is these are both 40 microfarad. This one tested 40. This one tests open because when I test this one, it uh, it's hooked up to this diode matrix here, and it shows diodes. So I'm guessing that capacitor is probably nowhere near its value of 40 microfarad. These two 200 microfarad capacitors check well within uh, 10%, so I'm guessing those are okay. So I'm going to replace this capacitor because I bet you the reason why I'm having a problem here is initially I thought it was these opto isolators, but I bought some new ones, and unfortunately these are the 8-pin opto isolators, and the ones I got were 6-pin. Yeah, I could probably bodge them in and make them work, but uh we'll wait on those but i think i'm going to replace this capacitor i've got something that will work i don't have another axial lead capacitor like this so i'll have to use a radial one and uh maybe that'll get the thing to work because all the other voltages are fine except for the negative voltage rails they're all way off or almost non-existent so and i don't see any burned components i've uh everything looks fine so, anyway, I'll uh, swap this out with a good capacitor and uh, we'll see what happens. Well, this capacitor, I've had, uh, using this capacitor checker here, and it's giving me uh, that's saying it's 2,606 nanofarads. I know that's not correct. Yeah, so I'm going to change this capacitor because it should be. <laughs> no, there's no way it can be that way. That's I think this is a uh, 40 microfarad capacitor, so it's definitely not there. Well, I didn't have any of the caps. <laughs> I didn't have any uh, axial caps. All I had was radials, and I didn't have them in the right value, so I had to substitute. 222 microfarad 50 volt cap so this should work and so now let's uh power this thing or uh, power this thing on and see if it uh does anything at all here so before we had just a bunch of nines so now let's see what we get and here we go all right so it looks like it's working now. Excellent. Yep, now those two indicators there are now doing what they're supposed to be doing. Those two there are doing what they're supposed to be doing. That one was just the, uh, I think it was the zero LED that was just on all the time. And uh, that one seems to be actually still doing the same. It's working like it should. So until I can get the right caps, those will just have to do and I'll replace all these caps just replace them all even though this one tested okay that one tested okay these two tested okay I did test off-camera test on that one and that one seemed to be fine but uh, 
I think just for good measure we'll replace all of them and uh, get this thing going. So uh, let me button this thing up. But uh, yeah, it's uh, kind of nice the way these boards just hinge out on both sides. Easy to get to. And uh, of course you got alignment instructions there on the, uh, the case of the uh, analog board. So yeah, not bad. Pretty cool. So uh, yeah, just give me a second here and we'll button this thing up and see if I can do a couple of voltage measurements. Well, it is working. Uh, I checked all of the voltage reading or scales and they all work. All the triggering works, the delay works, the uh, selecting number reading works, and it's showing my power supply at 5.01 volts. It's 5.01 volts there. Down all the way up to 6 plus and down to 0. Go to the 1 volt scale. Up to one volt, and at some point it's going to overflow here. So what should be over there? It's two volts, 100 percent. And uh, see, it's uh, 1.1 volt, 1.1 volt. Yeah, so that's accurate. So let's try the lowest. Let's try uh, the uh, 0.1 volt. Oh yeah, that's working just fine. Up oh, overflow. So uh, what are we reading? 0.18 or 17 something? 0.18 something there. So hey, cool beans. Yeah. So that was all it was. It was uh, this filter cap here? Phone won't focus. Anyway. Like I said, I'll just have to replace all those caps. That way I can know for sure that the thing will work fine after here on out. But, uh, yeah, I, uh, I'll come up with some use for this thing. I mean, I've just bought the thing out of curiosity. Uh, I, you know, to me it's, you know, <laughs> three, uh, three and a half digits really isn't of much use to me uh, other than just doing basic voltage measurements, but... You know, maybe I'll uh, hook this thing up to a uh, scope and, uh, and trigger it and uh, see what uh, kind of voltage readings I can get uh, with, with uh, either with this uh, beastie here, because I did use this off camera to discover that there was so much ripple on the power supply rail that, uh, you know, the instrument just simply refused to work. So, yeah, all right. Well, I guess this is a uh, successful repair. Oh, by the way, when you buy these, uh, you need to get these little adapters here because, whoops, this instrument here uses, I don't know if I can get this off here, here I'm off. Anyway, there we go. It uses a, a Tri-X connector that uh, allows the positive and negative uh, lines to, to float. And uh, so it's got this three lug uh, connector on the front. So you can't use a regular BNC connector. You gotta get one of these. It converts it from a, uh, a triax to a regular BNC. And these things aren't cheap. This one's made by Keithley and it was pretty ex you know, expensive for a connector. It was you know over a hundred bucks. I found several of these online that were roughly the same amount. Some were a little cheaper, but you know, I decided to go with a uh, with a Keithley brand and uh, and get this. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to do these tests. So yeah, I'm uh, I'm happy with the thing so far. So anyway, I'll study the manual, learn some of the programming. Uh, this thing can do some binary programming that allows you to. Read back the uh, uh, the condition of the instrument panel and program the instrument panel using, you know, maybe four bytes, four to seven bytes. The uh, HP uh, 3455A here, you can use what is called a binary program and uh, read back and uh, and set the instrument panel with four bytes. That's it, and <laughs> it's very interesting. 
I guess if you needed, uh, if you guess your computer only had, or your instrument controller only had four bytes of RAM for programming, well, I guess you could uh, still use it with these instruments. Anyway, that's it for now. So, uh, I got uh, my filter caps for my next project, so I'll get that going here in the next day or so, and uh, we'll post another video. So, hope this was uh, at least informative. So, hey, you guys have a good one, and uh, we'll see you next time around.